Nurgle tends to be super easy and super fun to paint because any mistake that you make, you can fix immediately. It's, it's all about happy mistakes, yeah? It's the goal of happy mistakes. So let's get into it with Plague Bearer's Flesh. This one is going to be obviously the contrast paint that I'm going to use as the base color for my Nurgle Mini Tour. The paint had decanted a little bit, so I used my Vortex mixer to get it up to snuff. This little machine has made quite a difference, quite an impact in my painting. I could have been shaking bottles for a while, but this has saved me quite a lot of time and I just can focus on painting itself. Lava de Sepia from Vallejo is one of the washes that I like the most to get a nice brown color laid down. It is not very strong. It is very similar to the previous washes that Citadel used to have and it works more or less like Sepia, Seraphine Sepia from Ace Workshop. So it's an absolute beast when it comes down to laying down a nice coat of brown. Griff Charger Grey from Contrast has proven to be one of my favorite paints of this range and the idea behind that is that it's a nice grey but at the same time has a, like a bluish grey uh, greenish undertone that works great and I'm gonna use it for the fur. I'm going to use then dark coat flesh to give a coat to all the leather parts in the miniature as well as some of the metallics because that is going to help to create a nice rust effect later on. So with this paint just go ahead and do that all over the place. In order for the miniature to look a little bit more natural and not so greenish I'm gonna use it as well to go into different parts recesses of the flesh just to make it look more alive. On this next step I want to do two things. I want to add some extra contrast using this red, strong red called Flesh Terrace Red and I want to also muffle down some of the parts of the miniature. The red is gonna create this strong contrast with the green and then by using Vallejo Blue Wash I'm going to muffle down certain areas such as the crevices under the arms and also I'm going to paint the fur just to give it a little bit more interesting tones because right now it's too greenish I want it to look a little bit darker next I'm gonna use one of my FW Dale Rowney inks in this case is flame orange and I'm going to use this water it down quite a bit right here it was not quite watered down and I'm gonna go through the metallic parts in the miniature, not the gold ones, but only the silvery ones, as to create some rust effect. Next is going to be followed up by snake bite leather. We're still working with the metals and the leather parts. And in some cases, as you can see, I'm not painting the whole thing. This is just a very simple technique. It's just water it down a little bit and just dab the brush on those surfaces, creating a motile down effect. The next part is going to be using a metallic paint, in this case it's going to be Iron Breaker and I'm going to do more or less the same thing because I want to create that rusty appearance. I'm not painting the whole surface. Nihilac Oxide is going to create one more layer of oxide and this is very important. Water it down because Nihilac Oxide otherwise is a very strong color and it's not going to do exactly what I want it to do which is go into the recesses create an interesting pattern here and there and not go all over the place and create a green patina that is going to make it a little bit too unrealistic. This is personal preference but I like using solid colors not washes to do final highlights. In this case I'm using Ushapti bone to do the horns, the teeth, the skull, some of the leather straps just making a small highlight here and there to give it you know a little bit more pop. Mm, some of you might not like it some of you would prefer to leave the colors as they are, but this is a personal preference, as I said, and I like doing it. The miniature is almost done now, but I have a couple of places that I haven't painted yet, so I'm gonna use a little bit of the leftover orange, and I'm just gonna retouch those with that color. As you can see, is the lock of hair on the belt, and also the handle of the sword. With pure white, watered down, this is pure white white scars paint I go and create a few extra highlights the color has to be quite watered down so it's not too solid and even though it is quite watered down I might need to do a glaze which is the case with in this case blood letter 
but if you don't have this color because it's discontinued use any red color that you have mix it with medium and then you can do the same thing that i did right here the only thing this minotaur is missing now is its base but we are ready to move to the next one corn the god of slaughter it's usually painted with red tones gold so in here we're gonna use those to make it look like a very aggressive bull ready to charge Corn's colors are usually red and bronze, and for this I decided to paint the flesh on the Minotaur using Flesh Wash. As you can see there is quite a lot of gold painted in the chainmail, the different parts of the armor and the belt. And this with the red armor itself, which I painted with Blood Angels Red, will make the base for the colors on the Minotaur that is dedicated to the God of Slaughter. However, for the fur, I wanted to go onto a more mute down color, and I think black will be the right option here. I started with Grief Charger Gray as the base color, which I will darken further later on using Contrast Basilicanum Gray. Although I don't show it on the video, I use the same method as with the Nurgle Minotaur by using the sepia wash from Vallejo to paint the leather, the bone the handle of the weapons etc etc and also to give a wash to the gold color and to the metallic parts i also used this snake by leather contrast paint to further do some work on the leather stripes and to create a delimitation between certain areas of the miniature that were not that clear with the detail brush i also did a few nicks and notches on the armor to make it more interesting I followed up with Gilliman Flesh on the flesh of the Minotaur because I thought that he was rather too pale and I wanted to achieve a little bit more color on that. With Iron Breaker I highlighted the weapons and the small details on the Minotaur and I created this pattern on the axe blade to make it look a little bit sharp. These are small belt buckles etc etc those small things were all highlighted with Iron Breaker. With Gehenna's gold, we went back and highlighted the golden parts, the bronze parts on the miniature now, including that small blotch of wash that we have at the bottom of the chain mail in the Minotaur. I usually like going back and using the Shafty Bone to highlight horns, teeth, leather, stripes, hoops, the claws on the hands of the beast etc etc there are many things that i like to go back and highlight because it makes the miniature look a little bit cleaner this is something that i was used to do when i was painting with layers but i think that it is a small effort and it actually makes the miniature look much cleaner by doing some highlights with particular colors like this one you can make the miniatures look as if you had done them in layering which is absolutely fake but you know at the end of the day it's a secret between you and the miniature itself this is another color that i like using for highlights it's pure white i water it down a little bit so it runs well from the brush and in this case i'm doing small highlights at the bottom of the cracks and also on some other places which I know that I'm gonna be able to tone down a little bit later. If you use too much white all over the place, the miniature is going to look quite pale, maybe chalky, so it's better not to overdo it. And if you are not confident enough on doing this, maybe don't do it at all. But I think it's worth trying. I mean, these miniatures are cheap. The idea for <laughs> buying miniatures like this one is that you can do a lot of testing, do a lot of tries, and you can always learn new things. If you paint red, green, gold, having a purple is always, always a good idea. You need to make sure that you don't overdo it, you just put it in certain areas, very controlled, but it's going to create a more interesting color by doing so. As you can see here, I'm controlling the brush strokes where I'm putting these, but purple is a very, very nice color that will make those areas pop. 
I was not sold on the white highlights of the armor, so I wanted to glaze them down with a little bit of wagon orange. But if you don't have access to this color, please get another orange and just tone it down with a little bit of water or maybe medium. I use it for the metallic parts in gold to create a bronze effect. And after I was done with that, I saw the feathers on the arrows were not painted, so I wanted a more contrasting color and I used some green. Now with FW Daily Rowney Sepia, I went back and I painted the quiver to make it a little bit darker and then I used it with a fine detail brush to paint the grain on the wood and the pupils on the eyes. These are artistic inks because of the consistency and the good coverage that they have. You don't need to water them down too much if you want to do fine detailing. It is actually easier to do fine detailing with these things rather than with paint watered down. Because of this, they are fantastic to draw tattoos, free hands, or in this case, a few wrinkles because of the flat surfaces. I want to make this miniature look as if the sculpt is better in quality than it actually is. So this is how I painted the core miniature. Now he only needs a base, but as of now, we're going to move on to the next one. Cinch! This god is all about deception, lies, and also magic and arcana. So I wanted to get something that it was depicting this magical power and something that it was very different to the others, very translucent almost. Ethereal. It's time to paint the Singe Minotaur. And here we go with somebody that I wanted to look a little bit pale. I don't think flesh tones will do well on this miniature in particular. So I used Apothecary Grey to paint everything but the weapons, the armor and the clothes. So both the fur and the flesh will be painted with this. With Talazar Blue, I went through the shield and the shoulder plates that he's wearing, basically the armor. And as you can see, this color has a nice coverage with a very pale blue. So I think, as of now, it looks quite good. I forgot to add, obviously, why, why not, why not, eh? To add how I painted those fabrics in him, but it's very easy, you just use the magenta or the red wash that we have from Vallejo because the blue is pale and I wanted it to be a little bit more solid I used the Vallejo blue wash on top of the Talazar blue with Magos purple we're gonna go over the ones that we painted before with the red wash from Vallejo and in this way we're gonna make it look purplish and not pinkish I want the fur to look a little bit darker, so I'm going to use Ninth Pond Gloom on top of the previous coat in order to achieve that. As usual, we're going to highlight the different metallic parts with Iron Breaker. So we're going to do that with the sword and also the metallic bands that the shield has, leaving a little bit of the blue wash underneath. You probably have noticed that I have already darkened certain parts with sepia, the leather, the gold and whatnot. And in order to recover the color a little bit, I'm going to use Gehenna's gold on the golden parts. This is going to be further followed by room pan steel. I'm going to highlight both the gold and the silver parts. And you have not to overdo it, okay? Because otherwise the gold is going to be looking silvery and it's absolutely not the intention here. The idea behind this is that Cinch is much more clean looking than whatever we have with corn and Nurgle. Ethermatic blue, I'm going to use it to create a bluish patina on the weapon itself and also on the flesh of the Minotaur. I wanted him to look a little bit translucent, magical, mythical, you know, it's singe, it has to look bluish. And then I'm going to use contrast Space Wolves Grey to paint the horns and the hooves on this creature because otherwise they look very pale and I don't think it pays justice to the overall look of the miniature itself. I'm also going to use this very focused in certain areas of the blade to create more contrast and a little bit of shading here and there 
to make sure that the miniature has more tonalities, more volume here and there. This one, see it's purple, is very dark. You have to be very controlled and very careful with this one. Water it down, but I'm gonna use it to create some shading and some delimitation between certain areas of the miniature, such as wrinkles and some extra shading over here in the different parts of the fabric. Painting the eyes, the inside of the mouth, the inside of the ears. All this extra shading is going to make it look a little bit more solid. The colors will pop up. Those the limitations between the areas do actually make a difference when you paint the textures to make them look more three-dimensional. I'm painting the wrinkles now, as you can see in the knuckles, the elbow, etc. etc. So this is a very strong color, as I said. Water it down when you paint the fur because otherwise you're gonna overdo it and it's going to be very black, very dark, and that's not the idea behind this. We want to still have some relief in that fur. I'm going to darken as well the hooves and the horns with this one water down so we don't overdo it. I'm doing the final highlights with some pure white. I watered it down quite well because I want to control how much I cover with it. In this fashion I'm going to try to get a little bit more relief, more three-dimensionality on skin tones and also I'm going to touch up certain areas like teeth, the eyes, etc. with this color. This is where you have to be a little bit more patient if you want to do it. Yes, go back and forth, see where you can achieve more relief, more interesting effects by painting it white and don't overdo it. If you overdo it, you can always fix it again by glazing it, but being careful, pausing, looking at it, going back, you can do great things with white. I use Iyanen yellow to paint the eyes, Volupsus pink to paint the tongue in the mouth, and then I went back and checked what was left to be painted and I saw that obviously the pommel and the handle of the sword hadn't been touched yet. For my Chaos Army I also paint the gems green and I feel familiar with it and I think it will be a nice choice to do here as well. Using Ushapti bone, I did some final touch-ups on the leather where it was stained with the blue washes and I will call it now finished and ready to move on to the next Minotaur. Slanes is the god of sensuality and I decided to paint it both with a very pale skin and because of the pecs that this Minotaur had well, the choice was going to be obvious that this was going to be a Slanish miniature. So in order to paint the miniature for Slanish, I'm going to use the red wash from Game Wash Vallejo and it actually finishes off as a pink. That is absolutely fine. This is probably the best color that I could have found to paint this miniature. With Contrast Magos Purple, we're going to paint the plates on the armor, the shoulder pauldrons and the belt and also the wristbands that the Minotaur has. We're gonna use Contrast Space Wolves Grey to paint the fur, also the hoops, and to darken the recesses on the skin. Apothecary White, which is not white, it's grey, is going to be used to darken the recesses on the cloth. Volupsus Pink will be used to darken the armor in certain areas, leaving some of the others untouched. Also the wristbands and the belt, and I'm gonna paint a couple of nipples or aureoles on the chest of the miniature. This is Slanish after all. With Druchi Violet, I'm going to darken the aureoles on those nipples. I'm also going to use it for the eye sockets, and I'm going to paint with that the leather bands that are holding the shoulder pauldrons on place.
basilican and gray i will use it to darken the fur to darken the muscle on the face of the miniature and i'm going to use it too on the metallic parts of the miniature as well as the belts that we painted before with Gucci violet very carefully not trying to darken it too much Night Haunt Gloom I'm going to use for the handles of both the small axe and the knife and then I'm going to proceed further with this color to paint the horns, the hoops and to touch up a little bit those belts that I painted before with Trucci Violet once again. As you can see I'm trying to layer it down closer to the uh, base of the horn and not to the tip. The tip I want to leave it as white as possible. The hoops will receive the same treatment and we're gonna use this color also to darken a little bit the deepest part of the area that we painted with apothecary white before. As usual I'm gonna use iron breaker to highlight the metals once again to make them look a little bit cleaner. Known oil will be used on the crevices in the hoops as well as the base of the horns for it to make them look darker over there and get more contrast. And with the use of Gehenna's gold and afterwards we're gonna use also Runefang steel, we're gonna highlight the metals a little bit further making sure that we clean up those places where they might have been darkened too much by the use of washes. Because Slanish is another quite fastidious god, I'm going to clean up the metals or the silver parts as well in order to make them look shinier, a little bit more sharp compared to what either Corn or Nurgle will look like. The gold receives the same treatment very carefully so we don't make them look too silvery. White scar is going to be used to clean up the tavern and also to create some edge highlights on the armor and the different parts. If you make a mistake on this last step, please remember, like I did right now, you can fix that with a little bit of the wash that you use for these parts. You can always glaze back, but if you are careful, your brush is sharp and the paint is watered down correctly, you will achieve the results without having to go back and forth too much. I'm using red wash again to tone down those highlights in the areas that I think they are too drastic but sometimes I just put a few drops here and there just to make sure that the miniature looks highlighted but not too highlighted in certain areas. I was debating between using yellow and blue for the eyes. I went with the latter by painting a single dot on the pupil of the eyes and just giving it a glaze with ethermatic blue. And with this, we finished this Minotaur. We can move now to working on the bases for all of them. It's time to finish off the Minotaurs and I'm going to paint the bases as I usually do with my Warhammer Quest miniatures. I start by giving them a coat of Drakenhof Nightshade and then I paint the small flagstones on the base where there is no rubble using Ushapti Bone and then highlighting with a final highlight of white scars. I paint with Abaddon Black, watered down in between the flagstones. I use a thin brush and detail brush in order to do this. And then with a thicker brush and without watering down much the paint, I paint the sides of the bases before I go into the next step, which is using Agrax Earthshade to just color down, give a glaze to those flagstones, make them look a little bit brownish and staining here and there in the rubble to make it a little bit more damp. Overall, I enjoy painting the miniatures quite a lot. I was not really sure what I was going to get out of that envelope when I was starting cutting it open. And the miniatures are not superbly detailed, but nothing that a decent paint job cannot fix and make it pop. 
So as you can see, it's just about sitting down, having an idea in your head and just trying to get it to fruition by painting properly. As you know, Rasterwise is not meant for you to win competitions like big, big, big standard competitions. There are many YouTube channels that you can go to see better tricks than mine, way better. This is for you people who want to get rid of your pile of shame. I'm showing you the tricks with the fastest and the easiest method to get quite decent results, honestly. If you have watched the video up to here, man, thank you very much. I know it's a long one. If you haven't, well, this is not for you. I really appreciate whenever you guys uh, hold up for the whole duration of the video. I try not to make it too boring sometimes and just spice it up with some stupid things. My name is Miguel. This is Rush and Wash. And I catch you guys in the next video. Bye.